Are you an introvert who has never been in a relationship before? Well if you are, congratulations. Because there is this show made by furries called Beastars who basically turned our lonely depressing lives into a masterful art piece that will make you say, Bro. I feel you. But a bit too much. Cries in introvert. So if you haven't seen this series please kindly exit this video and binge the show Beastars on Netflix so that when you come back you could lavish the maximum brain cell deterioration experience on board the Snuggles Express. Hi, my name is Sir Snuggles, and recently I have indulged into the arts of the furries. Yes yes judge me all you want. Actually please don't I'm a bit too insecure for that. But still, do not let that mentality stray you away from watching one of the best anime of all time, called Beastars. Cause this furry show has completely changed my perspective on how I see myself, as a pathetic lonely introvert who's never dated anyone, into. I am so flocking proud to be a lonely turbo virgin cause one day I will find a cute banana loving bunny who will understand, love, and appreciate me for the complicated socially broken person I am. She just went from zero to banana loving deep real flocking quick. And yes, kids who are using the parents' account to see this video, Turbo Virgin is a lighter tasting version of the olive oil, and you should really not be here. Although, there are a lot of other aspects from the show that makes it so impactful, like how it brilliantly criticizes our broken and racially divided society. Or how the 3D animation surprised us all especially after being traumatized by the magnificence of cats. Or even how the intro of the series is so incredible that when you are feeling useless, you just need to remember that there is the skip intro button on Beastars. However, there are a lot of other more intellectual YouTubers who already analyzed these complicated subjects. So instead, this dumb butt named Snuggles will explain to you with his last functioning brain cell why Beastars masterfully depicts the life of us introverts that will make you say, I'm so proud of being a lonely turbo virgin. Thanks for the many lessons and beatings mom. Well when we first enter this mature rated Zootopia, we meet this cute fluffy twilight furry named Legoshi. He is a shy white wolf, which we introverts would instantly assume. Oh wow, an introverted scary looking main character. How original. The writers must be planning on portraying him as the shy awkward silent student who is secretly a killer psychopath or a creepy pervert. Or even a billionaire vampire that will save an introverted girl's life and make hybrid vampire babies. I thought only Hollywood would make an accurate introverts like that, but for an anime to do it. I expected better from the sushi motherland. I thought sushi is supposed to increase your intelligence. Or was it high blood pressure? But anyway Zemo give this a shot cause I refuse to discriminate furries. A few moments later. Oh for doodles. He. He. He is actually relatable, but a bit too relatable. What the flock is happening? Why is this furry named Lego she piercing into my socially insecure life by accurately resembling an introvert's life in high school? 아버지, 심폐소생술을 준비하십시오. 부끄러운 줄 알겠다. <coughs> Alright, sorry about that, I kinda lost myself back there. But holy shit, I've never expected an introverted anime character to be this relatable, much less a furry. I guess I really need to stop discriminating against furries like that. Hashtag furry lives matter. So unlike most introverts portrayed on television, Legoshi actually resembles a lot on how we fugly looking introverts treat and are treated in society. And yes, I said fugly introverts cause majestic looking introverts have that privilege so they are treated in a totally different category in society. But don't you worry, it's okay to be fugly. What matters is this. Having good cholesterol levels. So the first thing that I find relatable about Legoshi is that people tend to judge and misread him. Well, I think all we fugly introverts know this feeling. It's like that one time you try to say hi to your crush and she or he just does that judgy look of disgust at you. I mean like, even if we have good intentions when we awkwardly approach people, People tend to judge us based on our looks and the negative stereotypes behind them. This is perfectly depicted when Legoshi stares at this alpaca chick and so she starts exploring those judgy stereotypes. Oh my god. That creepy looking wolf is just staring at me. Oh else, I heard carnivores nowadays enjoy watching herbivory and die. 
He's probably trying to capture your body in his memory to mangle his banana at night. Oh sheep, that creepy mother- A few moments later. Why the flock did he follow me here? Is he going to mangle his banana at me? Or even worse, poke it. Stay back, or I'll be the one poking you, you creepy flocking- It's a love letter. It's for you. I, I was waiting around out here until you were alone. Um, I said some bad things about you. The truth is, you're a generous wolf. I'll make sure everyone knows. Please forgive me. Forget about it. I'll be just fine. Feared and hated. That's the story of my life. Oh god, this is too flocking relatable. We fugly introverts tend to accept how society sees us because we really can't stand up and do anything about it. So instead, we choose to suppress our feelings under this mask we call silence which makes us feel sadness and frustration. But what society tends to forget is that we are humans and so we have a limit to how much emotions we could suppress. So what if we reached our limit and it exploded? Well, my baby Lego shit perfectly shows this when he tries to penetrate this little bunny. With his fangs you pervert. Should I? How satisfying will it feel in my mouth? That's how it should be. You have struggled your entire life, and now you've reached your limit. You've suppressed your feelings ever since you were a kid. Is that sadness you're feeling? Or is it frustration? It's neither. You feel joy from the bottom of your heart. Now that his feelings have exploded and established what it wants, pay attention to how he suddenly still tries to suppress his feelings but gradually embraces it. No, stop, stop. All it takes is one bite. Give it to me. I'll eat you. This scene. Well, I think we all could relate to what Lego shit is going through. Because the way that society tends to ignore our feelings would often result in events like bullying, being singled out, and eventually, it feels like the world is against us all of a sudden. All that ignorance produces feelings like anger, loneliness, unfairness, and sadness, which will eventually make us desperate. And therefore we would take extreme measures just to know what it feels like to be happy. Even if it means that we will put another person at a disadvantage. That is why the scene of Lego she trying to devour this bunny, strikes us at the core. Because deep inside we understand why he is doing this. And if it wasn't for this goat moaning out Legoshi's name, that bunny would surely have died and Legoshi would have embraced his wild side, which is the result of society's own ignorance. Oof that was kinda dark, let's just move on to the brighter parts of Legoshi then. During the scene where Legoshi accidentally tries to stop a couple of students from mouth banging in public, he tries to make himself lose and be stepped over in order to not offend the person attacking him, so that there could be peace. Well, that basically sums up how I treat my bullies in high school. Yes, most of us introverts really enjoy our peace and we really can't handle grudges and conflicts. It makes us flocking insecure which would then create stress, and when an introvert is stressed, well well, we basically start to show irrational side effects like stress eating, incapable of sleeping, full thinking overdosing, and over master. We introverts really need our peace, and we would allow other people to squish our nuts and harass our often superior bodies just to have that sweet good joy called peace. Because we don't really care about petty things like winning a pissing contest, because reputation to us is, well, non-existent. As long as nobody is hating us personally, we could still live with ourselves even if it means that we need to be pissed at all the time. And if you were wondering, yes I did have a bully that is half my size that liked to do weird things like choke locking me which actually felt more like a weak hug on the neck, punching my breast and blaming me for cracking his fingers, threatening to run me over with his fancy hammer and bankrupting my already bankrupt parents. Though he oddly said that he loved me and missed me when I moved to the States. What a weird bully. But if you're watching this, Adolf, I want to say one thing. Don't forget to put on some joint healing balm on your fingers, you pathetic little jerk. Well, I got to be honest. 
When I think about females who like to do the act of banana orange with many men, I kinda think that she is a shallow and unintelligent person. But when I met Haru and learned about her backstory, oh for doodles, my respect and mindset towards banana loving women immediately changed. Because now I am able to adhere to the emotional challenges that Haru is going through as she tries to be seen by others as an equal. How was I not able to see that banana lovers could also have complicated feelings that goes deep? No pun intended. Wink wink. So when my baby Legoshi meets up with Haru, well let's just say that I got a mini seizure after realizing how relatable Legoshi acted upon meeting her. So when they first meet, Lego she immediately becomes nervous because he almost gobbled her last night. So he tried to make an excuse to go away, but apparently his genital-faced friend abandons him, so now Lego she is alone with a girl that is making him nervous. Ah yes, an introvert's worst nightmare, and heaven at the same time. So Lego she played it cool, and helped out when she asked. Alright you're doing very well Bravo 6, keep avoiding awkward situations with the tango. But then Haru grabs his tail and his reaction is... She... she touched me. Oh god, his reaction. Why does it have to be so goddamn accurate? But when they continued talking, Lego she seemed to be enjoying her company. Obviously. Because Haru is a genuine kind-hearted person, and Lego she is. Well, a lonely turbo virgin. So when she asks him, I want to pay you back. What do you like to eat? He starts to enter the awkward thinking mode because he wants to give an answer that will allow him to spend more time with her yet not make her feel uncomfortable. Because if she does feel uncomfortable and ends up never talking to him again. Well. Yeah, yeah, failing is not an option. Oh my poor baby Legoshi, he doesn't even realize that he's making the situation awkward by thinking too long. Don't worry, it's fine. You can be rough, I can handle it. Haru, why the flock are you half naked? I think you broke him. Well it's not like my brain wouldn't stop functioning in this kind of situation. But if you're thinking, wait a minute, he's a lonely turbo virgin. Isn't he supposed to be a pervert? Well yes, but actually no. Okay, there seems to be a misconception that introverted turbo virgins are all perverts. Not all of us are perverts you know. The ones that are are the self-entitled turbo virgins who think that they owed women's affection, and that the only reason girls reject them is because they are fugly. The unperverted turbo virgins tend to be the self-hating introverts who believe that the reason girls reject him is because of both their odd appearance and weird personality. When we self-hating turbo virgins are close with a woman, our mindset isn't like, how the flock do I make her want to sleep with me? Will my girlfriend find out that I cheated on her? Nah, it'll definitely be worth it. Instead our mindset is like, how in the fadoodles do I keep her from feeling uncomfortable? I just wanna keep talking to her. So when she tried to mangle my innocent baby boy Legoshi, his brain literally stopped functioning, and so he covered her with a blanket and ran away instead. The very well done Legoshi, you've made the self-hating Turbo Virgins Council proud. After that incident, he basically starts to have a crush on her. Because... I'm feeling happy. I want to see her again. So he does the most suicidal and stupidest thing an introvert could do trying to approach her. Cause all we introverts know that when you try to begin a crusade to approach your crush, God is never on your side. Just watch. Hey, thanks for letting me sit on your backpack. Great. Dear God, th and I thought I've gotta gotten past this, but I can't even ask a girl her name. How do you ask someone their name? Why do I need to know her name? Why does a wolf need to ask a rabbit for their name? What is a name anyway? But then when he accompanies Haru to her dorm, something unexpected happened. My name isn't Rabbit. Actually, my name's Haru. What's yours? Legoshi, I want to see you smile more. I want to see more of you. If I can lock eyes with you like this again, I'd do anything, no matter what it takes. Sheet, that sentence just broke me. Cause, I did make a birthday video for my crush containing a compilation of her friends wishing her happy birthday. 
only for another guy to seize the moment and make her blow his candle. But she did say thank you to me, and so that was totally worth it. Art you know, the person who has a major crush on Lego she because he once pretended to be her brother. Classic Alabama. Juno's crush on Lego she kind of seems like an unrealistic obsession. And even though it is entertaining to watch a hot girl chase a lonely introverted guy who has no clue that she likes him. I can't help but think that this is really unrelated. Wait a minute. Did she actually? And I was just too much of a dumb butt to realize it. Oh for doodles. Okay guys, this is kind of a big brain time for me. Cause I think there was a Juno back in my freshman year, and I just now realize that she might have liked me this whole time. What the actual flock? Snuggles you dumb butt. And the worst part is her story is kind of similar to Juno's. Holy mother of nuggies why have I forsaken the only chance I had to have a girlfriend? Oh right, cause I wasn't desperate. Okay so here is my story dubbed over Juno's scenes so that you could see how creepily similar they are. So there was this new girl in class. Let's just call her Debbie. Which is the name of the grandma who hit me with her taxi. So we were both the only ethically Chinese people in the class. And I was kind of one of the cool introverted students because I lost 50 pounds during the summer break. So I had that success diet story and a slim cut K-pop artist kind of look. Though that diet most likely stunted my growth due to malnutrition. Well, guess I'll never be taller than my father. 친구님, 당신은 내 뼈의 길이를 물리쳤습니다. 물론 하나의 뼈만 빼고. She didn't have any friends and was being bullied by the popular local ethnic female students and would often eat alone in the corner. So I came to her, ate with her, and became her first friend in that school. She and I became close friends, and we would often stay up all night helping out each other's homework. On Skype we did it on Skype, and she would often care for me by giving me advice like how I should drink water when I got sleepy, or how I should be eating more rice so that I could grow bigger. Hey hey, she didn't mean it like that. Or did she? But I genuinely looked at her as a friend so I didn't really take those things as affection codes. And besides, at the time I had a crush on this tiny shy pale looking sophomore. Although now that I think about it, Debbie might have intimidated her to stay away from me. No wonder she always avoided me when I tried to talk to her. Or that I'm just really creepy. Though, I actually heard rumors of Debbie defending my name when the other popular kids tried to hit on her by ridiculing my name. Oh Debbie, now that I'm lonely and desperate, I really think we could have been a cute Chinese couple. Though I still have your Instagram, so I think I should. Nope, she has a boyfriend. And he's so thick. Must be all that rice you forced into him. Anyways, if you guys think that you had a Juno in your past, please feel free to comment your stories down below. Or if your Juno is a male then, share the story of that one friend named Mars. Get it? Because if you combine it you get Juno, Mars. I'm sorry I'll stop now. Ah yes. We all know this. Even the extroverts know this feeling. So during this scene, Lego she gets jealous when Louis pats Haru in the head like a flocking pet. And so Lego she feels anger and squishes the thing in his hand until it ejaculates sticky liquid which he then rubs on his face. This is a perfectly normal feeling to have. I mean like if you don't get jealous from another guy petting your crush like his personal pet then bro you deserve the kindest most warm hearted partner there is in this world. Though you'll most likely die single and alone in the end. But feeling jealous is not necessarily a bad thing. We're humans, we're designed to feel the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's what we choose to do about it that defines us as a person. Some of us choose the path of harassment. Some choose to make it a competition, or even just be depressed over it. But my baby Legoshi, well... Haru, I don't want my feelings for you to hurt you in any way. I cherish you, and I respect Louis. I meant you no harm. Legoshi, why do you have to be such an accurate cliché that hits us introverts really hard? I mean like, I think we all remember that time when we say that. As long as my crush is happy, I am happy. But deep down you know you're breaking into even tinier bits and pieces that will soon be unrepairable. Though if you're actually friends with your crush and continue on doing so, then I guess you can still be happy. 
But if you're just a spectator in his or her romantic life, then... Bro. However, if you continue to try and make her life happy even without receiving any credit, then this scene might give you a mini-stroke. What a relief. Mommy! You came for me. Oh, Maikoshi? I'm... sorry. <sighs> no, no. I'm just glad you're okay, Haru. But... Your uniform got dirty. Here. <sighs> The most painful part is. Look how genuinely happy he is. Oh nuggies, the pain is too much. Because like when Haru is in danger, her boyfriend in shining armor didn't come to protect her. It's the lonely kid who secretly likes her. Who she barely even recognizes. That came to protect her. This scene perfectly shows how we as humans don't give credit to the people who actually care about us the most. It might be your family, it might be your best friend. It might even be that one shy kid who keeps staring at you creepily and made you a surprise birthday video. They might just be in the background of your life, but to them, you are not a background. So if there is that one shy nerd who you barely know that made a gift for you, embrace that nerd, remember the nerd's name, and greet that nerd every time you pass by. You might not think much of it, but to that introverted nerd who secretly likes you, Every time you greet him or her, it's like the world just stops for a second and the angels start to call his or her name. But if that shy person is a convicted sex offender, then you might want to think twice before doing that. To understand the meaning behind the lion's den scene, we'll first need to dive into Haru's life story as she was about to die. She was born as a female dwarf rabbit, the weakest of the herbivores. She tried to live a happy life, but it was impossible due to her body and how it is viewed in society. And at the end she realizes that... I'm a loner. Even when I die. I can't help but think that Haru's feelings right before she gets mangled by this fluffy pedophile kind of speaks some truth to how we introverts feel in this day and age. We feel as if we are born a dwarf rabbit. A fragile creature who is void of power, status, and significance. We then start to question ourselves. If I were to suddenly disappear in the hands of a hairy molester, will anyone come for me? Mourn for me? Remember me? Or even notice that I am gone? At the end we feel like an insignificant being existing in a world who wouldn't care if we live, die, or get molested. Because at the very end, we are just another insignificant dwarf rabbit. But then my baby Legoshi kicks the fluffy molester, and throws Haru his moisty uniform. But as he saves Haru, he needs to show Haru the fugly side of him in order to save her. Yeah, we introverts have a fugly side. Obviously. I mean like the whole reason society avoids us is because of our fugliness. But if your crush sees that and decides to accept you anyways, then bro, you better not flock up this once in a lifetime opportunity. And if your crush is really hot and she is repulsed by your fugliness, well, don't try too hard catching her because having a fugly partner that accepts and appreciates you would feel far more wholesome than having a beautiful partner who rejects and is disgusted by you. Because there is no physical beauty that could overvalue the beauty of the heart. Well, guys I gotta be honest here. I don't really have an insight on situations like these. I mean like, yes I like to watch a lot of no-no stuff when I go into incognito mode. And my knowledge of positions is probably at level 69 right now. But in the end, I am still at level 1 when it comes to the real deal. Although Legoshi's submissive and obedient personality during this bedding ceremony scene is kind of accurate to what we turbo virgin introverts might do in this kind of situation. Cause I think most of our mindset at these kinds of situations would be like 나는 당신의 학생입니다. 미스 제발 안 내. At least that's how I think of it. But still, I might be wrong. So don't underestimate them turbo virgins, cause they might have imaginations that might make your body really sore in the morning.
The finale. In the end, Haru falls for Legoshi and they would have completed each other. However, Juno steals Legoshi from Haru to proclaim her love, and the society loves it. Haru therefore begins to think that Legoshi and Juno would be an amazing couple that the society supports, and she is in the way of that. Therefore she begins to do the best thing we introverts do in our lives. Suppress our feelings and hope that it will slowly disappear. But the thing about feelings, genuine feelings, is that they linger, and they won't go away unless you find something as genuine to replace it. Like heck, I even still have fluttery feelings for my crush back in high school, and that's two years ago. Though I kind of fear it's becoming an obsession. But yeah, Haru feels that it'll be best if she disappears from Legoshi's life, so that she won't be a burden to him in society. But apparently my baby boy Legoshi genuinely feels for her, so he tries to be with her, and even though she feels the same way, she felt the need to suppress her emotions because she thinks it's what society expects of them. So she replies, Face it, there's no guarantee that a wolf won't eat a rabbit in this world. We're not supposed to be together. There may be no guarantee, but I have a reason. A simple one. What is that? Because I love you. Love. This genuine feeling that Legoshi has for Haru is truly a thing of wonder. In the beginning, it was able to unite a couple of introverts against the comfort zones. Then it was able to unite a wolf's love against a rabbit's instincts. And now, it will try to unite their love against society. Well, if you are still here, that means you really do understand and appreciate this imperfect artwork of mine. For that I want to thank you from the deepest part of my lonely empty heart. If you enjoyed this video and have a lonely introverted friend, please force them to watch Beastars and send them the link to this video. The Lonely Introverts Council would really appreciate it. And if you guys find a part of the video relatable, please feel free to tell your introvert stories down below. I'm sure it'll comfort me and the introverts in this community to know that we are not alone in struggling to be accepted in our societies. I hope this video helped you understand the deeper meaning behind this masterpiece called Beastars, and that you lonely introverts would remain hopeful that one day you could find yourself a Legoshi to your Haru or a Haru to your Legoshi. I say could, cause I'm just speculating and can't really guarantee it, cause there is a chance that you might die lonely. I mean like, I'm not trying to be harsh here. But I got hit by grandma's taxi when I was on a 12 year old pink beach cruiser. So again, there are no guarantees. Oh and if you'd like to purchase this hat I'm wearing, so that your head could feel like a fluffy sushi roll. I've provided the link down below. Or if you'd like to check out the manga for Beastars, I've also provided the link down below. Or you could just click the link and buy something you need from Amazon. That way, you could support my channel at no extra cost. That is of course, if you deem me worthy to be given support. But anyways, I would like to thank you again for watching this video. And I hope to see you on the comments.